Good day and welcome to your favorite sport program, uh, Plus TV Africa. It's an interesting moment on a Saturday morning. I'm, I'm sure um, for viewers across the globe watching us, you likely want to expect um, the trendy stories of um, Victor Simeon not going to uh, not going to Chelsea or going to South Africa. But that's been what we've been talking about for the past um, few days. But today is going to be something interesting, something different from um, what. Um, Expected because while all this about um, transfer were going on, some Nigerians were far away in um, in Ivory Coast, um, representing Nigeria in a sport that is developing gradually. One of um, the fastest um, growing sports in the country. That's talking about archery. So if you're joining us for the first time, I'm Mudashi Shito and I have my guest um, joining us all the way from um, United States of America who is also a part of the national team coach, national team of um, the Nigerian national team archery and he will be telling us a lot about the goods um, of, um, of archery and what it takes um, to develop um, the sport in the country in a, in a country where so many things are not going on. I'm talking about um, Damidola Shola Demi, Shola Demi who is um, the Nigerian national team of um, the team of um, Nigeria, that means talking about um, archery. It's good to have you on the show, uh, Mr. Damilola. Thank you. It's always uh, my pleasure to be here. Good morning to everyone. Yeah, good morning, Nigerians. Because um, far away from every other sport, this is a sport that has been going on very well in, um, in the country. And mm -hmm. we know that there have a lot of difficulties in ensuring that um, it's get to the same level with other sports. Perhaps if not football, I mean table tennis, other well-known sports. And it's a different kind of sport. I've been part of this for a very long time. I've definitely been part of this. But tell us mm -hmm. um, about um, analysing the growth of, um, of, of archery um, in, in the country. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, once again, thank you for having me on your show. I know you've been a big... Uh, your, your TV station and your program has been a big supporter of archery and you guys have been doing great in terms of promoting the sport, which is awesome. Uh, so for starters, archery itself, um, which we often refer to as um, the game of sticks and strings, because it's basically a stick that has a string attached to it. So um, it began in the early 90s in Nigeria, it was introduced, but it was just picking up really, really slowly. Then I think sometimes in the... Um, 2010s, 2012, there was a resurgence of archery, a bit of it. I think the Nigerian police force team started archery at that time, which went on for a while. But unfortunately, it was more like a sleeper sport. It was just there. It wasn't a sport that many people cared about, you know. So during the COVID um, in 2020, my friends and I were at home, we were bored, we didn't have anything we could do. So one of my friends, which is who also happens to be on the national team at the moment, Tayo, I know you've had him on your show before. Okay. I saw on the status where he was practicing archery somewhere and um, I just called him up like, I would like to be a part of this. And that was how it began. It's interesting to note that all of us that started at that time, we are on the national team right now. So okay. um, from 2020, we began archery proper. I think at that time, we were the second private archery club in Nigeria. However, at the moment, we are the largest private archery club in Nigeria. Some agencies have a few archery clubs, but nonetheless, I would say that between uh, 2020 and now, we have won the largest collection of archery medals for Nigeria by any Nigerian, okay. by any means. So, um, in the last four years, we've gone from Actually, just being a side sport that happens once in a while to having so many archery centers like in Abuja, where my archery club is, we have a couple of archery sports around in Abuja. We also have a school archery program for students because we believe so much that um, winning medals at the Olympics is not done by you just wishing for it. You know, you have to prepare for it. It has to be deliberate. Um, you don't stumble upon success by chance. We have to plan for it. So those were the things we have been uh, working towards. And we told ourselves in 2020 when we started that we were going to put Nigeria on the map in terms of archery. So um, in 2022, that would be our first um, international archery outing. We went to South Africa. 
um, the compound boat team went to South Africa and we made Nigeria proud. We won two silver medals. And that would be Nigeria's first international archery medals that we would ever have. And that was like the beginning was a spark. It set things going. And from that moment, it's begun like a, a trajectory that, was, that became unstoppable. Because okay. the next year, in 2023, we were also in Tunisia for the African Championships, where we won uh, one bronze and two silver medals, again for Nigeria. Okay. So uh, it's been a good growth. And I think to accumulate, I'm just going to talk about the uh, medal winning component and go back to other sites. So okay. as at last week, uh, myself and nine other members of the national team were also in Abidjan. In Abidjan, they had two separate events that were all rolled up into one. Uh, we had the Western Central African Archery Championship, which started on Sunday, way up until the Wednesday, or to th Wednesday, then the Abidjan Grand Prix, which started from Thursday to Saturday. Okay. The Grand Prix, which runs from Thursday to Saturday, welcomes archers from all over the world. Well, the previous one uh, welcomes archers from Western Central Africa. So we had about eight actually eight countries that participated in the Grand Prix. Okay. Then the other, sorry, in the Tizakota, and the Grand Prix was open to yeah, um, to everyone. yeah. But well, well said. I'm sure this uh, your analysis would definitely um, let to love uh, Nigerians and apart from Nigerians. Because we have been watched mm. about more than um, 48 countries. We are on DSTV. So uh, I just want to mention Nigerians. A lot of um, um, African countries that has um, this channel, DSTV, we are on channel DSTV if uh, we get interested yeah. in this. So uh, before we go, especially because there's a topic definitely for that particular tournament you, okay. you're talking yeah. about. Um, in, in Nigeria, most sports are grassroots sport. Is most few sports start from the elite sport. Sport like golf and the rest of um, such sport. And I'm beginning to ask that um, where does archery start from? Because, you know, um, it, there are grassroots sport that definitely, if you go through the grassroots public schools, that is where we have enough of um, patronage. Where do you want to place archery? Because definitely the only way you can go this sport is either you allow so much of the elite uh, persons in that category. Mm -hmm. To be to to participate in it in a large um, form, or uh, you allow those in the grassroots to participate in it. So where does archery falls? All right, thank you very much. I think for archery, it's a bit of both, uh, a bit of both in the sense that when you are competing at um, at the high level, it becomes very expensive. You know, you need high precision equipment, it's expensive, you need time, you need specialized training. Because in um, the kind of training you need for archery, at the moment, we cannot get the best in Nigeria. I think uh, I told a couple of people, my friends and I learned how to shoot archery on YouTube. Oh, okay. We did not have a proper archery coach. So yes, there's a component of the elitist part. However, the grassroots component of it is this. Archery itself, as an art, has always been in Nigeria for centuries. That is, all our cultures and tradition, we have archery components to it. I'm sure prior to now, we've seen we people hunt with bows and arrows and all of that. So what my colleagues and I did in 2020 when we came, here on, came on the scene was this. We told ourselves we're going to bring archery to the grassroots. Mm -hmm. And we were able to do it to a large extent. What we simply did was... We looked for um, alternate uh, affordable equipment that we could have people start practicing with. And what we also did was we opened archery centers where people can walk in, just shoot a few um, arrows. If you think archery is good for you, if you think that is uh, what you want to do, then we'll guide you through the process. Again, we have entry-level equipment that people can start practicing with that is very affordable. They may choose to pay at once over time. But that way we can practice it. And we've, um, we're, we are currently running archery programs in about two or three schools in Abuja. Okay. And it's been a success largely. We've been recruiting um, new talents from that. And we also run boot camps every year uh, during the summer holidays for youths that's 17 from the age of 5 
to 17. So it's like a, an experimental program that we are doing. And so far, the results have been good. So like I said, it's a bit of both. It is very possible to distill our trick down to the grassroots. But okay. that will not happen if we do not get adequate um, government support or okay. private sector support. But it can be done because we have done it successfully. Okay. That leads me to my next question. Um, all yeah. you said so far, I don't want to be mistaken because of our, um, our viewers across the globe, yes. is the fact that all these have been personal support and private support. You, I don't think any of all we've analyzed so far except you tell me correctly, has it involved um, government support or it has been private endeavors, individuals, group of friends coming in to make it what it is now. If there's anything the government, the ministry, sport ministry or the federation as it is right now has done in the past to enable um, the sport to add the little of that support in whatever way. So what has it been with government involvement in, in the growth of the sports? Um, un unfortunately, there hasn't been much government presence in our tree. Um, some government agencies like the police or the military have archery teams. So in terms of um, government involvement, maybe when they sponsor those teams that belong to their agencies, that is as much as government funding has gone into archery. Um, and we, we all know the way sports is set up in Nigeria. The minister has zero control over the federation. So if the federation is not funded by whatever means, then they can't provide support to the athletes. So and so. But um, since we started archery, we've not received um, a kobo. Hmm. They sent a dime or penny from uh, any form of government agency or any or the federation itself. Okay. Uh, what the federation does is they just... Um, sanction or approve international competitions that's all but in terms of funding or provision of equipment it's all been private uh, our savings and from family and friends that believe in our dreams oh, okay but but in, in that in that area they've been i don't know whether you are we are aware but there's been so much going on as regards to um the present um there's a there's a letter i received um uh, that um the present president, he's no more the president, president. Um, there's a crisis going on in Nigeria Ashri Federation that the World Ashri yeah. body um, did not recognize Abdullahi as the present president of Nigeria Ashri Federation based on mm. the legalities of the last election, which um, I observed um, by proxy. Um, we mm. we sent um, someone to observe that for us, that um, the embattled um, president is no longer um, the president. So what has been going on in, in the administration? Now that you've gone to, to Abidjan, who has sanctioned the papers and the letters and the involvement that had to take um, the national team, which are also part of, to represent us at the just concluded um, event in Côte d'Ivoire? Okay, um, as regards the... Um administration of um, the federation uh, the president had been he had served eight years already in um, in his tenure so during the last elections in sometimes february march he wanted to run again uh, however there were other people who felt okay i mean we have great ideas you've done eight years let's come in and see how we can uh push but i think he had a different um different opinion on how or what he wanted and he remained hence the whole crisis with um uh, world archery, world archery on um, the recognition of the presidency. So what we did was um, there was a proviso in, like a, a, a lacuna in the laws to um, for eligibility to compete at uh, at Abidjan, okay. which was okay. Private individuals can come together under a country's name and will compete. So it was that um, gap that we, we used. So that was the only way Nigeria could successfully compete at that event. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Because okay. we felt um, representing Nigeria was more valuable than any other thing. Okay. Because after all, the glory would come back to Nigeria. So that was what we did. Okay, before I go to my major second, my major second topic for, for today, still on archery, yeah. I, mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you think is uh, the, the armed forces, the police, 
um, the Navy. I've seen some of them in your pro events. And no. maybe Nigerian civil defense, not so sure. But what do you think is their own interest that make them to be part of this sport? I mean, the Nigerian police have been involved. I think the Nigerian Navy have been involved. And I'm no. not sure about any other um, forces that have been involved. What do you think no. is that thing they want to achieve that um, brings about their involvement in, in, in the sport? Okay, uh, okay, first and foremost, while I can't speak for them because I'm not part of them, okay. uh, what I can say is this. One, um, usually they, are, they have like world military games, African military games, world police games and all of that, and actually happens to be a component of these sports. Okay. So it only makes sense for them to have their own archery teams so that they can participate in, in all of these events. That's one. Uh, secondly, archery sports, it's a target sport, and like every other target sport, it requires extreme discipline, it requires extreme focus, you know, which is great for law enforcement or security agents. You cannot practice archery if you are jittery, if you are all over the place. Your mind has to be focused on one thing and one thing always. So I think it's a great sport for them. And uh, the good thing about archery is you don't have to run around to practice archery. All you have to do is shoot walk up to the target, pick your arrows, maybe it's 50 or 70 meters, and you walk back to shoot. So I think for them, I would like to postulate that it's uh, one, to have a uh, proper global presence in world law enforcement or security agency sports, and to also provide some form of um, decent recreation for their officers and their men. Okay, okay. Lastly on the topic, are you, uh, is, the is it actually closer to the dream or, you, or it's still very close to where you started from, or you're happy at this moment to where the sport is in the country as you look forward to the future? Okay, um, I would say it's a work in progress. Five years ago, most people didn't know there was archery in Nigeria, not at all. But right now, not it's still growing, not everybody still knows, but if you Googled Nigerian archery, you have more than enough information mm. that will come out about what we've done, what we've, what we've achieved, um, we've come on the global space. I remember when we showed up in South Africa in 2022, everybody looked at us and wondered, where are these guys coming from? You know, Nigeria is not a known archery nation. But guess what? The last time we were in um, Cote d'Ivoire, people already knew us. They saw us and they kept whispering, oh, that's the Nigerian team, that's the Nigerian team. It's still a work in progress. So I think we are for, we've... We are still far from where we ought to be, but I think we've made uh, decent progress in terms of where we are coming from. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, we'll go to the next topic. Okay. That's um, the 14th West, um, West and Central Africa Archery. As you said, there's two events in one, and we've got pictures of that um, event. That's the next topic we're talking about, the 14th West and Central African Archery, and also the 12th uh, Grand Prix of... Um, in, in, tell us about this event. All right, thank you very much. So um, the uh, West and Central African Championship is uh, a championship organized by all the archery federations in West Africa and in Central Africa, okay. where all those countries come together to compete. And it's done for a reason. In as much as uh, the entire Africa is geographical Africa, you know, but certain countries within Africa still would rather compete with other parts of the world as opposed to ourselves, you know. So the, with the, if the uh, event came up to fill that need to find, okay, if the rest won't play fair with us, let's play with ourselves. So hence the Western Central African Championship. And that is also done every year to ensure that one, Africa um, actually grows well in these um, sub-Saharan regions okay. so that we can provide sufficient archers for the African Championships. With that said, uh, at the it's called the Tizakota, Tizokata rather, it's called the Tizokata event. Okay. So that held from Sunday to um, Wednesday of last week. So in that event, you had different archery categories. You had the recurve, you had compound bow, you had bear bow. Then they also had an interesting uh, archery category called the bamboo bow, where they try to encourage local type archery um, equipment production and competition. And that's what makes it a bit unique from 
that category is a bit unique from every other archery category. Then the Grand Prix, which ran from Thursday to Saturday, is open to the whole world. You can come from Croatia, you can come from Peru, um, Venezuela, any part of the world. You come in and you compete for glory. Um, so much about um, the, the the medal. Surprising that um, you you won several gold medals in in that event, in the two events. Uh, is is this the emergency of um, Nigeria as um, the biggest um, um, archery nation in in in, in Africa? Um, okay, uh, the team won ten gold, two silvers, and four bronze medals. While these are okay, um, I think we are, we are not yet there because the host nation, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, they won a total of 23 medals. And understandably so, and that's because they have a viable archery program that has been running for decades. But um, I think what we lack in terms of um, in years of experience, we make up for in passion, the Nigerian spirit, you know. We've been able, we, are, we ran second on the overall medal table okay. by the end of the day. So we can get there, but I wouldn't want to say we've gotten there yet. But like we are an emerging, we are an uh, I'm sure you, you, you like us to know that the country um, is an emerging nation when it comes to um, archery in, in, in the country. I'm sure we still have... Um, Shall I let Demi there? Hello? Okay, um, we still have um, Shall I let Demi. I'm sure that has to be as a result of um, the interruption from, um, yeah. from the next. Okay, we still have you. We, we, we yes, I'm back. Okay, go on. All right, so like I was saying, um, we are an emerging force. We aren't there yet, but we can achieve it. Uh, we've come to stay in um, African archery. We've come to stay. And interestingly, this year i've been competing i've competed in nine separate events in the u.s since i've been here okay and um, i've medaled in all of them oh interesting since i've been here oh yeah so um and every time i go out to compete i'm always wearing the national colors definitely every time so people that have not known about archery in nigeria who have been it's interesting to know that um while we wait for um, Shola Demi to, to get back, it's so interesting, like he said, that actually has been... So I think there's a connection challenge, yeah. Okay. Go yeah. on. So, yes, yeah, so um, in terms of archery, the world is getting to know that Nigeria has a viable archery program going on, uh, that there are archers in Nigeria that can stand neck to neck with archers from all over the world. Yeah, so, yeah, we are emerging. We are not just there yet. Yeah, now, now to my question, you said something interesting, and um, does the country know that any time you represent, um, you practice archery in, um, in USA, you're always mm -hmm. wearing the green, white, green flag, and is it, is it based on club level or based on the right to represent the country at that event as a member uh, of the okay. national team? Okay, um, I think it's uh, there's no strict regulation as regards that. Okay. You know, yes. Uh, so I just go, once I register for the events, I compete, I wear my national colors. Okay. And um, they, they love it. The Americans love it. They walk up to me, talk to me, okay, you guys have an archery program. Okay, this is the first time I'm meeting a Nigerian, apart from all our the interesting things they've heard about Nigerians. But, you know, there's, they're always impressed, happy to know that archery is doing well, at least starting up well in Nigeria. Okay, uh, as and a it, member of the national team, are you privy to what should be expecting next in terms of archery, um, the participation of um, the national team, the participation of um, other events lined up? Because I know there's Zen Archery Club, I know there's Ark Archery Club, that's where you belong in um, Abuja. Yes. And we've known individuals yes. like Tayo, like Emmanuel Yeleke, with you and the rest of the team. W what's the plan for the year? And um, bef before you answer that, that reminds me that okay. um, what's the Federation looking like in terms of what's going on that Abdullah has not, is not longer the president of, based on the letter so given, um, and just circulated in, in the press from the World um, Archery um, Body, 
So what was the next thing? Are we expecting an election? If you have that, info, you have that information, or what are we expecting? What was the next thing? Is any of you that have been using your resources in the past going for bidding or vying for that um, um, or for that position? Uh, okay. Um, as regards um, the plans for the federation, honestly, I, I'm not privy to that at the moment. I I don't know what um, what direction the administration would go in, because sometimes it would be exhausting trying to follow up with the politics of sports. It, it, it could be really exhausting. So for some of us, we've chosen to focus on the game, developing our skills and making the best out of it so that irrespective of who comes into office, we'll still be able to deliver when called upon. Yeah. You know, so I'm not, I don't have much information on that. Um, as regards um, events for the rest of the year, uh, Arch Archery Club, that's the one in Abuja, we have um, an event coming up in November. Uh, okay. It's our annual annual Open Championship where we, we bring archers from all over the country and if possible all over the world to come compete in various archery uh, categories. As much as I know, that's like the major archery event in Nigeria left for this year. Okay. Um, regarding for, for next year, of course, there are tons of competitions open up for us to compete in as a national team. However, our limitation will be resources because okay. all these events uh, are outside the country. The Archery World Cup events, the Vegas indoor shoot, the one in Nimes, the indoor shoot in Nimes in France, you know, tons of them out next year. But like I, I had said earlier on, a lot of these events, both local and internationally, has been done with our resources. And okay. there's only so much um, we can spend on getting this done. So uh, if and we that's... do... And, yeah. and that's, uh, sorry if to cut you short, and that's always why in, in today's politics of sports, um, people that participate are always complaining about people that administer. Um, I think, um, especially in Nigeria, and I think going forward, a lot of persons or athletes that, um, um, that is why I think the Olympics, there's the Athletes Commission for those athletes, um, past athletes to be involved in one way or the other. They have a voting mm -hmm. right to also determine the way the sport is. Globally, yeah. there's always a difference between when you're an administrator or you're also an athlete there. So don't yeah. you think this is high time for individuals in your category who are spending time, resources um, to promote it? Because every medal, uh, we, we, every medal we, we see in Nigeria is, is winning in South Africa, in every part of the world. When you analyze the situation, it's also people like you that get themselves involved, like the one you said in USA with our resources. And most of the time, if you only look at the competition aspect of the game and you continue um, competing, our flag is flying everywhere when it comes to archery. There are other sets of people that are not competing, but by politics or by whatever way, they're involved in admi administrations. And when they get there, um, they don't administer properly because they are not part of those that intend to go to sport. So are you looking forward to your group to, to push someone to be someone part of you that have been promoting the sport to be part of administering so that there will be equal balance? There will be, yes, the man in charge knows what we are facing outside. Not the man in charge doesn't know what it, the bowl or arrow looks like. Is, is, are you thinking of that in future? Because I know Imana Oyeleke, perhaps he, he has, there's a lot of support for him, but I don't know what, what the situation is right now. But what's your own plan for the future in terms of okay, administration? Like you, all right, like you rightly said, um, like sports administration in Nigeria is very challenging. It's been like the bane of uh, the growth of sports in Nigeria. We have lots of people that are there but cannot carry out. They don't know what it's like to be a sportsman. Mm. Uh, a bit of backstory, right? Um, proud to me doing archery, I used to compete in uh, combat sports when I was in the university. Okay. I competed in Taekwondo and Karate throughout, throughout my university years. And I, would, I went to Nuga Games and different events. The life of a sportsman in Nigeria, especially when you don't have adequate resources, could be crazy and terrible. Mm. Because people that make decisions, don't you know what it feels like, you know? Uh, so with that said, with that said, um, yes, Emmanuel Oleleke ran for uh, president at the last elections and uh, 
that was where the election was had questions around it. Uh, we are hoping there's going to be a new set of elections, and we are hoping he runs again okay. because he's an archer and um, he knows where the shoe pinches. You know, so which I think it's one of the great things that you can ever have if someone has been in your shoes. It's easier for the person to make the right decisions when it comes to administration. So we are hoping he runs again. But of course, that's subject to um, when there will be elections, mm -hmm. if at all there will be any anytime soon. Okay. We hope there will be anytime soon. So he runs again and we'll see how we can push archery to grow. Okay, that's nice. Been interesting moment. I'm talking to you, um, um Shola Demi and um, that you could still be based out of the country in America and still mm. keep um, using the bow and arrow to represent the country positively. When should we be expecting you soonest in the country, at least to have you in the studio and tell us what life as a Nigerian archer is in America? Because time will not permit us to I analyze know. what it means to be an archer in a faraway mm. country, knowing that then the support is just from yourself, mm your family members, and few of your friends. When will we be expecting you in the country? And he... uh, I don't know at the moment. Okay. Um, okay, currently, I also double as the state coach for Oyo State Archery Association. Okay. So that, yeah, means so, obviously, um, that means obviously you also be a board member if the election comes, if you vie for that position. Ah, uh, well, but because uh, I'm away, I'm far away, okay. and um, it may not be... I mean, I'd rather have other people that are on ground have that part done, you know. Um, I mean, I wouldn't want everything for myself. I, I, I believe that um, there are tons of people that are gifted to run positions, so let's have them do it. You know, let's test them and see them do it. So um, I'm, we are currently planning um, an advanced training session with the Ohio State Archery Association. So okay. if that works out, as soon as it does, I'll, I'll definitely be in the country to carry out some advanced training okay. for new archers over there. Yeah, other than that, I don't know, I could, if, if there will be other national assignments, I could come in much earlier because okay. I'm really occupied right now here. Yeah? Okay. So, um, but then again, if duty calls, I will come. Okay. Thank you very much for being a patriotic um, Nigeria, both here and both in America. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Yes. It's a pleasure talking to Damlola Shaladimi, who also, at uh, the tail end of um, the, the program, that um, he just informed me that he's also the state coach of Oyo State. I'm sure the people of Oyo will be glad to have such an experience at Chan who is a member of the national team and is doing so well for himself in archery in America and also wants to contribute to the development of um, few Nigerians that are like that, that um, are away. Um, staying abroad does not take them away from the support they give the country where they come from. That's, uh, on, the, on that note, we want to say a big thank you for that part of the program. Now, we'll be, for, for those that have been asking, we're looking at um, the closing ceremony of um, the 2024 Paris Olympic. You know, uh, when you are not, um, the, the way they do videos in big events like that, you don't, get, you are not opportunity to get um, the video like if you are not watching directly on YouTube live. It, it takes a lot of time before we, we get, um, they get the video across. And for those asking, um, while um, we are the tail of this program, I think it's high time to leave you with um, what the um, closing ceremony of Paris 2024 looks like. Though the ongoing right now is the Paralympics, but um, the closing ceremony, the old world saw what the opening ceremony looks like, you know. That's the first ever opening ceremony in the history of the Olympics that we have um, the parade on, 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 on the sea. I mean, the river, a very well-known popular river in, in, in Paris. And I was there when to, I was... Um, privilege um, to, to watch life when they were doing the cleansing of that river a few days, a few weeks before the opening. So now, but they were unable to do that for the closing ceremony. They had the closing ceremony, not in the stadium, but something's very close um, to a stadium, very interesting. Some part was in the stadium, some part was outside um, the stadium. Beautiful, beautiful closing ceremony moment for Paris 2024. And that's all on today's program. I still remember that she wishes to. Don't forget to join us on all our social media platforms 
to be part of um, interesting moments. You can join us, drop your comments about every um, sporting event we've talked about, the guests and everything that makes Plus TV, um, especially Plus Sport, interesting. Thank you very much. Enjoy this wonderful, wonderful highlight and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.